A reading from the Gospel according to John. Standing by the cross of Jesus was his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. And then he said to his disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, there are devotions, and then there is devotion. Of course, it's not my place to tell you what devotions you must practice, what specific acts of piety you must perform to be Catholic. The Way of the Cross, Nine First Fridays, Novena to Our Mother Perpetual Help, the Sacred Heart of Jesus, Our Lady of Guadalupe. So much of that depends on different cultures and our changing times and one's personal likes and dislikes. Nor would I argue the point that if you are meditating on the glorious mysteries of Jesus and Mary, you do it best when you are saying the rosary. But devotion is something else again. You see, I may legitimately stay away from pilgrimages to Medjugorje or Lourdes, from Fatima or Chustahova, but I risk a rift in my spiritual life if Mary is not an intimate relationship in mine. Why? Because Mary, this Jewish woman who gives birth to God's Son, this woman who at this moment is gloriously alive in soul and body, this woman is one of the most powerful symbols the Christian possesses, and symbols are what give life to our belief. Let me explain. What is a symbol? Well, the most common understanding we have is it's a sign, but not just any sign like Wor Worcester 40 miles away. A symbol is a sign that works mysteriously on our consciousness so as to suggest more than it can clearly describe or define. It's so pregnant with meaning, which is evoked in us rather than explicitly stated by what we're seeing. And God has revealed God's self, especially through symbols. In the Old Testament, Abraham as the father of God's people, the burning bush seen by Moses, the brazen serpent in the desert, the kingdom of God in the preaching of Jesus, the cross on Calvary, Jesus' resurrection, the descent of the Holy Spirit. And then there is Mary. Mary is a remarkable symbol. But she's more than just a symbol. She's remarkably real as a person. And that is why she is so significant a symbol. So what does Mary reveal about God that is so terribly important? What does Mary reveal not so much in her words as in who she is? I've said this often, but it's worth repeating. First and foremost, Mary reveals what it means to be a disciple. In what way? Her life is an open-ended yes to life as it unfolds. As we know, our God is a God of surprises, and if you haven't experienced that yet, I promise you, you will. And our spirituality, our life with God, is not a matter of ever onwards, ever upwards. It's an adventure wherein you can promise yourself two things for certain. Number one, the Holy Spirit will ceaselessly surprise you. And number two, God will always be there. And no better human being better symbolizes such an open-endedness as the mother of Jesus. 
beginning with an angel's surprise in Nazareth, through a ceaselessly surprising youngster in Nazareth, to a dead Christ cradled in her lap, and a risen Christ leaping from the rock. But we will never discover this unless Our Lady is more than just a swift Hail Mary or a lighted candle, unless we warm up to her as our own mother. Secondly, Mary, our mother, reveals God's own mothering. Do you remember the words of Pope John Paul I when he said God is not only father but even more so a mother who wants not only to be good to us, wants only to love us, especially if we are bad. Mary takes us beyond herself as mother of mercy, help of Christians, refuge of sinners, comfort of the afflicted. She's all these but she ceaselessly points to God as the one to whom these qualities most properly refer. It is no longer a judgmental father who is led to smile at us by a mother's prayers. God is the most loving of all mothers, far more maternal than even Mary could possibly have dreamed of being. God's justice does not need to be tempered by Mary's merciful intercession. To forgive is indeed divine. It is the compassion of God that is disclosed in this merciful, compassionate woman. But you and I will not discover this by memorizing Mary's Magnificat or sailing, saying the Hail Holy Queen. We will only experience this if the mother of Jesus is genuinely our mother, my mother, only if I am as close to her as I was John beneath the cross. The mother of Jesus reminds us that the mighty God who has done great things for her is mother whose primary role as the icon of Our Lady Perpetual Help indicates is to present her son to all of us that her value as a divine sign and symbol is that she, more than anyone else, was endlessly open to a God of surprises, that her gifts as mother reflect a God who is not only father, but even more so mother. Behold your mother. Behold the woman who was the closest of all to Jesus, the woman who typifies all we as Christians should be, the woman who will never cease to be our mother, even in eternity. <laughs>